this month we have received love and we have received hate. This is a story about how to navigate in a startup journey in both ups and in downs. And the purpose of this episode is to give an inspiring insight into what is it like to run a startup in real life and to let you have a look into what is going on. Kind of like a reality show of a startup. And I'm here, of course, as always, with the founder of Great, my good friend, Eric Bergman. You are, to me, known for many things. And I have a question for you. You have three things that you value. You have many things you value. But three of them is, one is being an entrepreneur and a very active doer. Someone who implements things right away. You also identify yourself with being someone that is very honest. And you identify yourself with someone who wants to become a great father. Which one is the most important for you, if you had to choose? I was like, where is he going with this? <laughs> yes. If I have to choose. I think actually to be a good father at some point in my life. And I'm not sure if that's just because I have curiosity for how that would be, since I don't have children for now. And I've kind of know the experience of the other things, in a sense. So we'll see. Um, uh, I'll give that one a think. I'll keep it behind my ear here be, and save it for later. I think the beauty of life is that you don't have to choose. Uh, that's true. I'll just choose everything. Yes. I'm in a candy store and I'm just going to take it all. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here with, with you, with Emil, the uh, proud podcast host of Becoming Great, who was the first employee into Great as a Company. He's my friend since 10 years. And... He's the smartest and most passionate learner I know. And just like me, wants to find playful ways of learning, which I think is rare and I greatly appreciate. So thank you for being here with me today. Mm, playful ways of learning. I haven't heard that before, but I love it. Uh, I have a friend, Alexandra. One of her things is playful productivity. I like that one too. It's a similar thing. I it's think a similar that thing, the, yeah. way to, the way to stay productive is to enjoy the process. Oh, and yeah, if so you too. can ask yourself, yeah, I mean, how, if you can ask yourself, how can this task be fun? And even if it's not the optimal way of doing it, if it's fun, you're going to keep doing until you're done. Oh, if yeah. it's boring, you're likely to give up. And if you already think a task is fun, you will learn so quick. Just absorb it like a kid. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right. And together, me and Eric, we are doing this podcast, Becoming Great. And the purpose of this podcast is to inspire entrepreneurs who wants to make this world a better place and today this is going to be an update episode about our company great.com that will give away 100% of its profits to help the environment now a lot of things have happened this month we actually had a difficult time to boil down what we want to speak about but one thing that has been very enjoyable has been your instagram campaign where you pledged to donate a million dollars to the rainforest and that is one dollar for every person that was tagged on a picture on your Instagram account. So do you have something to share about that campaign? Yes, yeah, so we can start we, we, we yeah. can start with a little background info. I was just having a really shitty day. I was really distracted with a lot of things going on in my life and I just Felt like, okay, I need something more fun to focus my energy on right now. And I saw this speech from the UN with uh, Greta with, how dare you? And I was like, if she's 16 years old and she can do this, I can better get, it, get the fuck off my ass and do something productive for the environment and distract myself. So I said, mm, how can I do this? Okay, let's donate money. How can I donate money in a way that it makes it fun? Let's put it super publicly on Instagram and say that for every person who donate, who comments and tags people in this picture, I'll donate $1 and we'll see how viral it can be. 
So the idea was super spontaneous, not thought through at all. Actually more to distract myself from a shitty day than to save the environment, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> but it, uh, it worked out pretty well. It's interesting because I heard just the other day some some haters saying that, oh, Greta Thunberg, she's not doing anything. She's just, she's not doing something. And I'm like, huh, nah. She actually made someone go from distraction to action. And that is, that's leadership, moving someone. Yeah, I think that no one has been a better face for the environmental cause. And sure, she is not doing She's not giving solutions. She is not actually researching this, but she gets it at the top of my head. So I acted on something which I might not have done. Well, I wouldn't have done it at this very time if it wasn't for her. Mm. So she's definitely making a positive impact, even though that's hard to see in many ways. So how did the campaign turn out in then? So it went super viral to start with. Uh, I went to bed in the evening. And when I woke up, there were 6,000 comments of people tagging each other. So I was like, hmm, it's a good thing I put a cap on this to $1 million. We can see how this turns out. <laughs> uh, and then some newspapers wrote about it. Some people picked it up. Some people called me to, to do an interview. A local newspaper from my hometown in Sweden called and wanted to talk about it. So it was fun. Um, it slowed down quite a bit, though. It reached 12,000 comments all in all. Uh, so I donated twelve thousand dollars, and I'm I'm very happy with how it turned out. I'm I like the idea of doing this publicly. Yeah, that's a great idea, and we're gonna get back to that a little bit sooner. And if you are curious about where we donated the money, I recommend that you check out episode number thirty-five that is titled with. A little bit of a clickbait title called We Will Give All, caps lock, love caps lock, all our money too. And that one is all about the environment. So if you want to hear how we think about the environment cause, check out that episode. And regarding this update episode, what I want to put in there is that the most exciting news this month, we are going to save for last. (laughs) <laughs> so you're, you're you're first to telling about a clickbait title in another way and then yeah. you're putting in this little super exciting hook about something's fun is gonna be in the end you better not stop listening this is actually exciting for me so <laughs> it's not a clickbait or is it <laughs> <laughs> it's a listening bait yeah so let's start somewhere else first before we get there uh, we launched the instagram the great.com official Instagram account. So what are your thoughts on that so far? It will start in this angle. So you are the one who's been been running that account. Yeah. Uh, why are we doing this? To your understanding. To, to my understanding, it has different purposes. Uh, one purpose to me is similar to the purpose of the podcast, which is to inspire entrepreneurs who want to make the world a better place. Another purpose of the account is a similar similar benefits for the company that you get out of your private Instagram account, which is create a platform for networking, for community, for potential recruitments to reach out with our message to update people are interested about great.com about what is happening in the company yeah that makes a lot of sense so what what have you learned so far doing this so me and spirit our colleague have been doing this and uh, we are both both raging noobs when it comes to (laughs) <laughs> social media spirit raging noobs I... as in super beginners <laughs> yes <laughs> i like that word but spirit is a raging noob he learned what a hashtag was three weeks ago <laughs> so now he's been handling the account and yeah in the beginning we wanted to get many posts out two three per day and we ended up having a quality that was too low so yeah, we felt it didn't it, it didn't bring any value to the listeners. So we have 
it felt like we've been playing Super Mario and we have been dying 10 times, just trying new things and redoing. So we have changed approach a lot. And right now we are, we have changed approach to having uh, a message that is valuable for uh, entrepreneurs who want to make the world a better place with some kind of rainforest background. And I, th I like that. I kind of wanted to take it in that direction from the beginning because I want great to get branded as an organization that is helping nature. So I feel good about that direction. So do you think it's realistic that that this will actually generate uh, attention over the next six months? Or how would you see that we need to invest a lot of time to get there? Does it feel yeah. like a realistic strategy? I think we're... I think we need to invest more time than me and Spirit can do at this point. Especially since both him and me are currently working half time, half time on this project. And I think to run an Instagram account good, you need to be active every day. Yeah. So let's say you're giving advice to another, well, beginning entrepreneur, uh, if we put you in that uh, pocket. Yes. Would you give them the advice to actually use Instagram or do you think it's a lot more work than than you first anticipated? Let's call this shitty advice because I don't have any real experience. I'm happy to give shitty advice. And my shitty advice is you need more time than you think and you need to actually enjoy interacting with a lot of people a lot of often. And you need to enjoy being in online conversations uh, with people and create a community where you're active okay so we'll turn it into advice then if you are a person who really enjoys interacting online and really enjoy the idea of creating content then this could be a thing but it's likely that you'll end up not producing enough not enjoying it enough and not realizing how much time it takes so it might be a dead end kind of situation. It's not like starting a business, start an Instagram account. It might be a good idea to hold back on that. Yeah, I agree. It's a lot harder than, than you might think. Yes. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, but either way, uh, great.com.official is the Instagram account for anyone who wanna check it out. And we're gonna keep publishing there, but not at the pace we started at and with a different kind of quality level. Yeah. So less post, better quality, which I think is good for anyone following. And also uh, updates about what we do, you know, podcast guests we might have on, the podcast that we are doing, updates about the company, things like that. Yeah. Yeah, sweet. I think it makes sense. Sweet. So what is going on on the product side? Because Great is going to be a casino affiliate that is going to make money through the casino affiliation space and then give all of it away to charity. So what's the progress been with the product the last month? So I've actually felt quite a lot of frustration with that this is not moving as fast as I wanted to. And I'm a guy who wants things to move fast. And I've realized that I'm the bottleneck pretty much everywhere because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm the one kind of setting the structure of the product and how everything would look like. And I haven't done that detailed enough for anyone else to pick it up. So I've given tasks to people thinking that they are easy to solve, haven't really done the research myself. And then they're actually really, really hard to solve and we're not moving forward. And we've gotten a lot slower pace than I've hoped. So now in the last four weeks or so, I've started to invest a lot of time in this from myself and we started to have a lot more calls and meetings and now the pace is, is coming. So we got a new design that's done. Uh, it's not live yet, but it's it's much more structured and the casino product actually looks like shit. But now we're getting somewhere where I'm actually really excited about where we, we have married the design of Amazon.com with TripAdvisor.com and kind of turned that into something. And the reason why we picked those two sites is that to me, I believe that those are the most trusted sources of user reviews uh, online. That people trust the reviews on Amazon, people trust the reviews on TripAdvisor. So if we can create something that somewhat looks similar, I think that gives us a certain amount of trust already to begin with. And uh, would you say this is a this could be a good strategy for anyone starting 
a company to look at who's doing this the best in your field and kind of use their design to gain trust for your brand. Yeah, I think that's a, the best way of doing it because if you don't have any data, you don't know anything about anything, you could either guess and your guess is probably going to suck. You might think this looks good because you think it looks good. doesn't mean anyone else thinks it looks good. And you're just going to guess. But if you're taking Amazon, that probably no company in the world has done more tests than Amazon, it's very likely that you will that they have made a better guess than you have. So if you can do something that's somewhat similar, for example, they have yellow buttons. So when you buy now things on Amazon, they're yellow. I can assure you that they have tested every single gradient of every single color out yeah. there. Yeah. And still a lot of people might go with green or red or anything else. And it's green or red might be better, but it's likely that Amazon have, has more data than your best guess. And at least you're not going to make a horrible choice. They're not going to yeah. make the worst choice. It's Definitely. not going to. It's not going to be far from optimal. That is actually a very interesting way to look at it with the yellow button. I remember because I used to play poker professionally for many years, and one thing that I often did was I looked at the very very best players, and then I looked at their statistics, and I just played the same statistics. I used the same frequencies, and I knew that well. They might not be perfect, but they can't be that far off because those guys are the biggest winners. That and makes they a lot have, of and sense. And they have done the research. Yeah, it's, it's very similar. So you, I can piggyback. Not, yeah. So I don't need to understand the science between the yellow exactly. button. Exactly. You yeah. don't need to understand the science of why is that poker hand played in that specific way. Yeah. You can just copy it and it will be a lot better than your guess. Yes, exactly. So yeah, I think that's... It's a good advice for many. It's kind of, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. It's like, I don't need yeah. to understand why the wheel is a smart thing. I can use it anyway. You just need to drive the car. I just need to drive the car. And right. it, yeah, I think that that makes a lot of sense. So that's a really big thing going on. I'm really excited about getting that up there. Mm -hmm. And we're working a lot with these reviews and how to review the casino, what factors to look in. And I'm very excited about that process. And it takes a lot of time. And I'm also super excited about... Uh, this guy, Tobias, who reached out to me um, a couple of weeks ago. So he's, he's from the casino space. He's an old friend of mine, but I haven't worked, never worked with him before. And he has kind of been chasing me for a while. Like, hey, Eric, I want to be a part of great. I want to be a part of great. I want to. And I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no. <laughs> and I haven't really given him a shot. And then I sat down with him and had a lunch. And he had listened to everything that we've done, he done so much research. He said so many smart things. And I was like, completely shifted my way of thinking on a lot of stuff that we were doing. It's like, yeah, let's do it his way. Let's get him on board. And one of the things that he wanted to do was to launch the great casino section in Sweden. And he had tons of good arguments for it. And I'm just, okay, I'm sold. Let's do it your way. Let's do it your idea. Let's make this shit happen. And so now we're preparing a lot for launching it in, in Sweden. And I'm really excited to start it in Sweden, actually, because it's home turf. There is a lot of things going on there that I, I know the people. And I'm really excited to having him on board running this because he's so passionate about this. Talking, just hearing him talking about this just fills me up with energy. It feels like just hearing his voice and the excitement in his voice feels like someone is just pouring Red Bull all over me in a shower and I just grow wings and want to do things. <laughs> <laughs> that was even rhyming. <laughs> yeah, that was the plan all along. I was really excited about things happening with the product side right now. We're also, we had a 74% increase in traffic from Casino month on month, which still mm. on really low levels, like 50, 60 visitors in uh, August and then so, well, 100 visitors, something in, in September. So it's really small numbers, but it's interesting to see the progress. And if we keep that uh, progress month on month for the next 10 months, then we're actually starting to see really good results. So it's a lot of things I'm excited about that have been moving to, that I've felt frustrated about in the past. And now finally it starts to become a company. Mm. Yeah, I think it did. It, it does. We had a weekly call two weeks ago where we talked about our values. And I think, well, how did you feel from that call? 
because I, I, I felt like that call brought us together. Oh, I love that call. So the background of that call is that we have been doing strategy work. Uh, me, uh, Joa Kim, and we had a consultant on. It's a big, big shot strategy consultant who's been helping us called Mike. And I have, I've never really liked the idea of having a strategy. To me, it's just, yeah, we'll put some fancy words on a paper and we're not really going to care about them. And in my previous businesses, we've done similar things. And like the core values we found then was uh, passion, curiosity and professionalism. And that's just three cool words that doesn't really mean anything. And of course, you want to be curious, passionate and professional. So when they wanted to do this kind of values workshop and see where we are, how we are doing, I was like, yeah, bullshit. But OK, let's let's do it. And then we, we had this values call to see, OK, what are the values of the team? What do the team value? How do we want to live as a great organization? And the first question was, what values do we have right now? And I just sat back and and listened because I didn't want to influence people and say this is the right answer, quote unquote. Yes, what, what were people saying? I'd love to hear your memory on this. You know, I think... I don't want to misquote anyone, but... To me, great feels like... I'm not even sure I want to say this right now because I'm pretty sure we're going to do a whole episode on our values. And do you think we should say this now or should I wait? Okay, let's, le let's leave this for a full episode and I'll, I'll yeah, do an email so and I'll put some cliffhanger into this. Yeah, uh, so for you listening, we have done an episode <laughs> in the past, episode 32, where we describe our vision for great. And then we made an episode number 36 about the strategy to reach that vision. And soon we're going to release another episode that is all about the values that we have. And we're going to recap that whole conversation in that episode. But I think we got to some really beautiful insights there. Yeah, well, I, I can sum it up. I, I just get goosebumps just thinking about that conversation. So I, I'm just sitting back. I'm just listening to how the team describes their experience working in great. And I, I just cry. I don't I have no words. <laughs> I sit there and I feel my my eyes just getting wet from from how the conversation is and what people say about this this baby of mine. And I'm looking forward to do a full episode about it. It makes more sense. We'll just leave this in for the curious minded person to find in the future when we're talking about it more in detail. In the far far future. No, no, not that far. <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, we're coming towards the end of this, and of course, it's time to reveal the most exciting news. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Do you want to do it? <laughs> of course I want to do it. Yes. It's my show, motherfucker. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Well, yeah, it's really exciting that people have started reaching out to, to our podcast, saying really nice things, and want to help us grow. And what happened just recently was that Times of Malta, which is the... Uh, biggest website in Malta, the biggest newspaper that's been around for 80 years, wanted to start publishing our podcast on their site and start writing an article about every uh, everything that we do. And this is not by any means done yet. We haven't agreed to anything. But just the fact that someone reaches out and wants to do this is such a proof of concept on what we're doing here and that it actually adds value and people are excited to hear it. And yeah, it's it got me even more showered in Red Bull and wanted to do even more things. And how do you think it will affect the <laughs> podcast if something like that happens? So this site has about a million users a month. That's a lot of people. And I'm just guessing that that could generate somewhere between a thousand and tens of thousands of listeners more to each episode. And the podcast right now is, is very small. And I think it will... So it will grow our reach significantly and grow our excitement for doing this. Uh, so there is so many things coming from it. I just mm. so one of the feedbacks they gave us was to uh, to deal with the audio quality, and yeah, 
So that's what we've been doing now. So if you don't hear a difference in the audio quality of this podcast, then we will be pissed and disappointed. Get out. <laughs> yeah, we don't want you to keep listening. No. It's definitely not our fault anymore. We've tried now. <laughs> now. I think we hopefully stepped the audio quality up. And you said excited about what could happen with the podcast. I feel it more as a, something that I feel more as a deep sense of, I would say some mix between joy and gratitude is that many people have reached out and said that we love what you guys are doing and I watched all the episodes or most of the episodes. And to me, that, that feels surreal. That's, that's such a huge compliment for me that someone would be giving their, a, the gift of their time to us. It's, it feels surreal and it gives me a lot of, a lot of energy to keep doing this and wanting to be my best and wanting to show up and wanting to raise the bar and wanting to give more and wanting to be more excited. Yay! Yeah, so whoever did that, thank you so much. It really, really gives us energy. Yeah, I completely agree. It's it's such a beautiful compliment hearing that what we do matters and that people want to listen to it. And yeah, it, it's just a wonderful feeling. It is. So I think we are approaching a good time to round up. Here. We left one little open loop somewhere. Do Did you we? know which way? What's, well, that's it, my good oh, yeah, friend. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The Let's idea of can... making public donations. Yes, the idea of bragging with charity. Yes. Can you do it in a British accent? <laughs> I'll do it in a British accent. And I'm not very good with this, but I'll give it a try. No, I'm not going to do that. Well, one thing that happened with this Instagram campaign that I did was that people started throwing hate on me from doing this publicly. It's like, all he wants to do is to stroke his ego, be narcissistic and show off. And... To that I replied, yes, I want to stroke my ego. I want the attention I want to show off. It's a big part of what I'm doing. And at the same time, I want to inspire others. And I want to create an environment where charity is cool, where people can be proud of charity. And I got a lot of hate when I said that as well. It's like, that's just bullshit. Uh, no one's going to do what you do. No one's going to be inspired. And I still felt that it was the right thing to do. And then I got a message from someone who had seen the campaign sending a print screen of them setting up a monthly donation of $500 per month to the same organization. Thanking us for doing the podcast, explaining this, thanking us for showing this and said that he wouldn't have done this if it wasn't for us. And that was such a compliment. It was such a relief to see that, wow, it's actually working. I'm not just a dumb ass bragger in this. It's true that if I can do something publicly, it can actually influence someone who then starts donating $500 a month. That's $6,000 a year. That's a 50% increase on your original donation. It's not yeah. even speculation at this point. That just proves That's just that evidence. it's actually very inefficient not to donate publicly yeah and, and then this other female influencer Fuki from Sweden reached out and say I will add 10% to every donation that you do in this campaign mm. so she added 10% so 50% on him 10% on her and then a few others and to me that really made me feel that okay every donation that I'm doing from now on to anything should be attached to something of yes. a public appearance with it and imagine if these people maybe they did but imagine if these people did that too in their network then maybe the woman that donated 10 percent, maybe three of her friends will donate one percent yeah. or whatever yeah. i wish we that we came to a place in history where it would be as obvious to brag about your monthly donations on instagram as it was to show your car or your vacation or whatever yeah i completely agree i don't think that we would have I, I don't think that we would have poverty and diseases in the world at least not serious ones if if we were as proud of charity work as we are over watches or handbags or 
um, vacations or expensive dinners. If people took as much pictures of charity work as of expensive nights out, I, I think we would have solved climate crisis, poverty, uh, polio, all kinds of things. So that's yeah. one of my one of my life missions that I see after this campaign that really shifted with me is the importance of that question. Yeah, and if and I think one important thing too is a shift. It's not only if people felt as good about it, but also if someone who did that received praise and a feeling of significance from people in their network, right? Because the yeah. reason you probably post an image of a night out or whatever is because you want to feel some kind of significance or social status. So please, if someone yeah. is making a public donation, praise them, give them yeah. significance. So we spread that idea. Yeah. Just pour love over them. Be yes. the Red Bull shower on their donations. Let them grow yeah. wings, inspire others and do the same thing. I think that's that's so key. It's it's not about starting to brag. It's about praising the ones who is posting. Mm. Yeah, that's a that's an important shift. I haven't really thought about it like that before, but that's a great place to start. Yeah, I completely agree. All right. Now it's time to round up. Now I, you can round up. I actually, actually, of course, knew that this loop was open. I just wanted to see if you were alert, as always. Well yeah, done, I appreciate that, that you're testing me to see that I'm on my toes. Yes, of course. Now, the reason we are doing this podcast is, of course, to inspire entrepreneurs, like we said in the beginning. But we also want to build a community here. We have, we so much appreciate people reaching out and saying that they enjoy what we do and people reaching out who wants to help us on this project. That feels, that feels wonderful. And it feels like what we're doing is important. Now, what we're practicing as well is to ask for help in this community. So if you do enjoy this podcast, if you think that this have helped you or gained your value in somehow, or if you feel like the project is important, Please think of one person, one person in your life that is into entrepreneurship or the environment or charity and send this podcast to them. Send your favorite episode and uh, that would really help us out to grow this and reach more curious souls. Yeah, please do. Please send them this episode and say, this is an inspiring episode in a reality show of a startup that's trying to change the world. And hopefully we'll grow this community together and you'll be a part of what we're doing here. Well said. All right, Eric. See you next week. See you next week. Thank you for having me. <laughs> of course, buddy. Ciao. Ciao.